Good. There are so many things to be said, but I also value, uh, try to value keeping things very simple. And so I don't want to over clutter your mind right now. That would just be unnecessary. And in fact, this whole teaching is Anupubha Sikkang. So it is a gradual process. But there's so many things we can say right from the, the beginning. Things will just come up as we go and we will talk about them. And if there are no more questions now, I will, I will go and giving the meditation instructions for this retreat. And keep in mind that the Buddha taught many different kinds of meditations. He very often started, not always, but very often started with the Brahma Viharas, loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity or steady awareness, what I call boundless calm cultivated boundlessly because these feelings, these emotions are very noble. They are very wholesome and they purify the mind. They are like the highway to Nibbana. They are like the highway to mental wholesomeness. And to begin with them is usually a very strong head start. And as the Buddha taught his son Rahula in a, a very famous discourse where he said, uh, Rahula, you should first begin by meditating like the elements and calm down. You know, these Meditate like the earth, meditate like the air, like the wind, meditate like the water, meditate like fire. These elements, they are not, they're not agitated. They are simply as they are. They're not trying to add up so many things. They're not complicated. The water is just flowing. The earth is just standing. It's simply there. It's just supporting everything. The wind, it's just blowing. It's not wandering. And the fire, it simply is burning. When things happen to these elements, they don't get upset. They don't get, they don't take it personal. <clears throat> they just are. They just are right there and they continue being. And this is helpful to calm down. And then he said to Cultivate boundless love. And how did he teach that? And there is no there is no better way of explaining it, I feel, is that than doing it here and now. So I invite you to simply take a comfortable position. And simply close your eyes. And relax. Let go of all of your expectations or anything that is in your mind right now.
whatever you might be or you might have been thinking so far or expecting or planning for this retreat, let it all go. And simply smile. Rejoice in this moment, in this wise decision that you took. To take some time for yourself. To develop some mental clarity and very, very wholesome states. If there is any tension in your body or in your mind, see if you can let go, release that tension. It might not happen all at once, but as best as you can, just relax and smile. Now the mind might come up with all kinds of things about what is this meditation, what this retreat will be. You might be thinking about all kinds of things. And it might not be easy to in fact let that go. And this is exactly why we are here. This is exactly why we practice meditation. And it is normal. Simply, simply relax and smile. Just allow the mind to do its thing. Like the water. Just allow it to flow. Allow the wind to blow. And take a step back and not engage in it. Continually taking a step back. Disengaging from the mind. And notice how good it feels. And smile. Mind can be a little bit crazy sometimes, and it's good to laugh at it. It's just the monkey mind. And on this retreat, we will start learning how it works and how it can be calmed down. and how it can become very happy all the time.
And as you calm down, you might start noticing the body. And all kinds of things are happening within this body. This body too is a flowing. This body too is a burning. This body too is a blowing. The heart is beating. The blood is flowing. Though we're not really doing it. It simply is happening, really. And once again, we just step out. We just let it happen. And smile. You might be feeling all kinds of things within the body. And that is fine. We simply do not engage in it. We allow it to arise and pass away, to flow, to blow away. And whenever is a good time for you, whenever you feel like you've settled down a little bit, you feel a bit more comfortable, bring up the feeling of love inside your heart. The feeling of love is this warm, radiant, perhaps tingling feeling that you feel in the center of your chest. That spreads through your whole body. The same feeling that you feel when perhaps you are caring for a child or talking to a child or perhaps holding a baby. Perhaps holding a puppy or a kitten or any kind of young animals. Perhaps for you it is a place you really enjoy going in nature where you feel love for all living beings. A place that inspires boundless goodwill in your heart.
and allow this feeling to be free. To not necessarily force it into a specific container, but to allow it to bloom and shine in all directions. Smiling will always help you. If you want to use a friend or a spiritual friend, if you have been practicing in this specific way. Very good, no problem. If you have a hard time bringing up the feeling and allowing it to be fully opened in all directions, You can spend more time remembering whether it is your spiritual friend, whether it is a child, whether it is a young animal, whether it's a place in nature. Whatever the thought is, the recollection is, the wholesome recollection that you use for bringing up the feeling, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the feeling itself. What matters is your ability to feel the feeling. We can use memory and thinking and imagination at the beginning to help us bring this love. And then as the meditation goes deeper, as the feeling starts to be easier, we simply let go of the thinking and the imagination of recollecting always something, we simply feel the love in all directions. With a smile. Allowing it to pervade one direction, a second, a third and a fourth, above and below, around and everywhere, across, to all living beings in the boundless universe. Without resentment, without judging, without criticizing, without holding on to any kind of opinion, just love.
We can call it love. We can call it goodwill. We can call it loving attention, loving kindness, caring attention. Whatever the word is, doesn't matter. What matters is the feeling. without trying to push it or force it outwards, but more allowing it to naturally shine. The feeling of love has a natural glow. We don't need to do much about it, simply to allow it to happen and smile. This is one part of a two-step process. Very easy. This first part is to cultivate a very wholesome feeling here and now. And that is easy, but there might be a lot of things arising in the mind. And as we move to, as we move along in this retreat, all kinds of things will arise in the mind. For all kinds of reasons. And when we notice that the mind has started becoming distracted, has started to think about all kinds of things instead of actually radiating loving kindness. We can notice every time there is a distraction in the mind, every time we start thinking and engaging into a distraction or a thought, 
The more we engage with it, the more there is tension that arises. And even discomfort. And to see this is called wisdom. And as soon as we see this, we let it go. We let go of the tension, release it, do away with it, and relax. Relax back into the feeling of love. This also is called wisdom. And smiling will always help you. It will always ensure that your mind stays uplifted, even if you don't believe in it at the beginning. Studies have shown that even when we fake smiling, eventually it catches up to us and we become happy and therefore this is a very good practice and we cannot feel loving-kindness if we are not happy ourselves and so every time we notice that the smile is gone we can question ourselves what is the mind doing? And as soon as the smile, we notice the smile is gone, we can laugh and smile again. We got caught up for a little bit. And so the first fold is to bring up the wholesome feeling of metta. And the second is to use our discernment to notice when the mind becomes distracted and to let go, to see it as a distraction, nothing more. and to come back to the love. With a smile. For those of you who are familiar with something that is called the six R's, And you feel like practicing this. That is very good. The six R's are exactly the same thing. The six R is a mnemonic device to help you through the meditation do things step by step.
to recognize when the mind is distracted, to release that distraction, to relax, let go of the tension. Re-smile and return to your loving kindness or your vehicle of awareness, of development. And to repeat, these are principles. What matters is that we understand the principles behind this meditation. Bringing up wholesome states and letting go of unwholesome ones. And so if you want to use the six R's, go ahead. They are a wonderful tool. On this retreat, we will be mainly using the principles that the Buddha taught in his own words. Mainly we will be talking about discernment. Wise practice. Wise awareness. And wise samadhi. Just as he taught in his eight-spoke path. And this is the same when we are walking, standing, sitting, laying down. As long as we're not sleeping, we continue upholding this mindfulness, this awareness of metta bhavana, loving kindness. And whenever something arises, whatever it is, worry, anxiety, agitation, sadness, dullness of mind, dislike, a lot of thought about something it's all the same. We treat it all in the same way. We just relax. See that the tension that these, these states bring. And we let them go. Relax. And bring up the metta again. 
continually in everything that you do on this retreat do it with love do it with the metta do not fall away completely devoted to it and then you will experience great progress fast progress When the awareness dulls out, the mind slips out of the love. Just smile and come back. Let go of any kind of distraction that arose. Relax and smile back into the love. There will be going through many different levels of understanding as we meditate. And these will happen throughout the upcoming days and we will discuss more about them. But for now, this is where we will all begin. And I invite you from this moment on to continue upholding this very wholesome awareness and to smile, be happy of this retreat, this wonderful opportunity that you have to learn more about this wonderful teaching of the Buddha, about the Dhamma, and this wonderful opportunity to practice. So precious. And we will talk about all of these things more into the coming days. How the loving kindness calms down into the different levels of meditation and how the meditation can progress through the Brahma Viharas and using different methods of purifying the mind.
And so from this moment on, it is up to you whether you want to continue sitting and sitting meditation. We have been sitting for a little bit, so some people might want to be going for walking meditation. But remember to continually uphold this mindfulness. This is what will really make the difference. We go deeper in the sittings, but it is when we continually develop the mind that it really bears great fruits. So whether you want to go walking meditation now or uh, continue sitting, that is up to you. And next time we will see each other today, we'll be at three at the next guided meditation, which will last an hour. And today, like I mentioned, is a very open day. Take it easy. Be kind to yourself. Start practicing love towards yourself first. And really find your own comfort in your new monastery. And there is no Dhamma talk for that purpose because this retreat format allows people to take a 10-day retreat without taking two weeks off, which means they can only take 10 days off, uh, one week off, and do this 10-day retreat. But this is a Friday and usually people might be still working, so this orientation, people might get to listen to it. Lucky people will listen to it in the morning, but the people who still work will be able to listen to it in the evening. Therefore, there's no Dhamma talk today. And it is really an open schedule for you. There is only that guided meditation at 3. And then the real schedule starts tomorrow. But remember, the schedule is there to help you. It's there to support you. You shouldn't feel like you have you are forced to do anything but really to enjoy this time for yourself and cultivating these wonderful wholesome states. So on this I will wish you a very successful and very wonderful retreat. Thank you all for being here. And thank you all for your practice, which is a very wonderful gift for the world. And I will see you all, or almost all of you, <laughs> at three. Or wherever you are at your time zone time. <laughs> that, will, that will be the time for you. So I wish you a very wonderful day until I see you again today. Thank you, Wendy. Yes.